Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name is Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at Woodpecker's Benchtop Board Mill, and we're gonna use that to surface an in-grain hard maple cutting board. Now, if you're not sure what I mean when I say an in-grain cutting board, let's just think about the way that a piece of wood is milled. We have the face grain here, edge grain here, and on the end of the board, those are the end grain fibers. Now, why do we want an end grain cutting board? Well, these fibers are the toughest part of the wood. That's the strongest direction with something come against it, coming against it like this. So, uh, it's gonna stand up to knife work better than a face grain board. So now we know why we want an end grain cutting board, let's talk about the how. What I did was I took several boards and glued them up edge to edge. Then we took those and cut them in one inch strips and I glued that back together. And that's what we're looking at right now. So you can see that we have a whole bunch of inch and three eighths wide pieces glued together. And that's giving us this entire surface in grain fibers. Now you can get real fancy with this and do alternating patterns and different species of wood. I wanted to keep it simple this time around, so I just did a straight maple cutting board. So the next thing to do is to set up our benchtop board mill. And the first step in that is to make sure that the height is right. Now this is just where we want it. The, the top plate of the board mill is just clearing our cutting board. That's where we want it. If I had a thicker board and it was running into it, I'd want to loosen this knob right here, this one, and move my plate up one or two notches. And if I was working on a real thin board, we'd go down a little bit. But what we're looking for is to have this inside lip just barely above the surface of the board. Next thing we need to do is adjust it to our router. Now the idea of these little fences right here is that we want our router to stay relatively close to the center of the board mill. So these fences are adjustable and we can run these in or out so that it will adapt to just about any size of router base that we want. Now, the router base that I'm using today is perfectly round. There are also router bases that have a flat side. If you use one with a flat side, be sure and always put the flat side toward the A fence. That way you'll always put it back on exactly the same way. Okay, so what we wanna do with these loose is we're gonna take the centering device, and this comes with it, and drop that in the chuck and lock it up. Finger tight, we don't need to lock that down with the arbor wrench. So we're gonna set that in. Now you can see that our centering device is just the size of the opening in the top of the board mill. We're gonna drop that in and then bring our two fences in until they hit the sides of our router base, and then we're gonna lock them up. Now that's gonna keep our router perfectly centered as we make our cuts. Now we're gonna take our spacer out of the collet and put our router bit in. And the router bit we're using today is Ultra Shears Carbide Insert one and a half inch spoil board bit. An excellent choice for surfacing cutting boards even in these small palm routers. It's a quarter inch shank, so you can use it in palm routers. And this particular palm router, this Milwaukee, has plenty of power to run that. We're gonna put that in, lock the collet nice and tight, and then we'll put the base back on. And to set the depth, I'm gonna drop this on and I'm gonna bring it over the board, release the lock and let it fall down until it touches. Then we'll take that off 
and I'm going to lower it the bit just a little bit more. That's about a 32nd of an inch, which should be plenty to clean this up. Just going to take a visual check on that, make sure that I'm about where I want. Looks pretty good. Now we want to make sure that we get clean cuts all the way around here. So we're going to work a climb cut all the way around the board and that climb cut will eliminate any chipping and then we'll be able to go across any direction that we want. So we'll do that first climb cut around and then we'll start going back and forth. So now you can see all along this outside edge, that climb cut gave us a nice, sharp, crisp edge without any tear out. Even with the round over, we know that we're not gonna have any chips or splinters coming out of that. Okay, so now we're gonna continue going back and forth. So that's the first side of our board complete. Now we're gonna pop that off the table, off the workbench, turn it over, tape it back down, and do the second side, okay? Okay, we're flipped, ready for the second side. Now we're gonna do our climb cut around the perimeter and then work back and forth, just like before. Now you can see that we have a nice smooth surface on here. We're ready to do some final finish sanding. Then we'll take our new juice groove bits, cut a juice groove in this. In fact, we did that in a deep dive last week. Uh, and this is basically the same board that we prepared for that juice groove. So if you wanna see how to use the juice groove bit, just check on last week's deep dive. We'll show you exactly how that works. So that's it. All we need to do is pop this up, sand it a little bit, round over the edges, and cut the juice groove. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this deeper dive into Woodpecker's Benchtop Board Mill. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know about every one of our great videos right when they come out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.